Hey, what's up guys? How you doing? How's everyone doing today? Haha, <laughs> I actually have a little bit of a different video than was originally planned. I'd originally thought that I was going to do a Makes No Sense video, but uh, on the video that I posted last week, I actually had a really interesting comment, something that actually, you know, seems like it'd actually make a pretty good video. Now, uh, this comment comes from Brickhouse Jesus. Really awesome name, by the way. Hey, spoilers. Since you're a classic muscle car dude, could you make a video about what you think about current car culture? I don't mean a video where you just clown on stance people and writers, because we've already seen that. More of a video where you discuss where you think car culture is headed, what you think of the new cars coming out and EVs and stuff. I've been thinking about these sort of things quite a lot recently, especially the part about EVs, because the EU, which is where I live, is trying to brutally murder the combustion-powered car as quickly as they can, and I would like to know your thoughts. Although I may already have a slight idea of what they may be. So yeah, no, very uh, well thought out question and actually something that I wasn't sure how I was going to bring up. I guess if uh, people want to know, then I might as well deliver. Okay, let's go over a little bit what car culture is like today. Honestly, since the 90s, as far as like car culture in general, it hasn't changed that much, minus the cars that people are driving. We're still very uh, big on street racing. For some reason, what are they called? Uh, Sideshows are still a thing, which I'm talked about how much I hate those, but uh, something new that's going around is the EVs, the electric vehicles. Now, as far as fads around today, there's not too many big fads going on, like uh, there were in the older days, but uh, a big fad right now is the Carolina Squat. Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> it's that thing that everyone's been clowning on for like the past few months on the internet. It's basically when you have like a truck and you squat the rear end all the way down, but then you uh, pump up the front end all the way up to where you can't even see the road. And actually, North Carolina, I want to say it's North or South Carolina, it's one of the Carolinas, they're actually making a law that says it's illegal to modify your car that way. Now, while some people are saying, oh yeah, that's crazy, oh, they shouldn't be able to do that, and other people are saying, oh, that, that makes sense, they absolutely should be able to make those kind of rules, it's actually a very, very important court case because it's kind of like the slippery slope fallacy if we have one state that says this is illegal because of safety then what's to stop other states from changing what safety means so another big thing that's going on in california right now it's either california or the whole state let me look it up okay yeah no it's not just california it's the entire country so basically the epa effectively wants to ban race cars now i'll tell you what that means basically they want if you want a race car you're gonna have to build it from the ground up you can't take a, mo a regular car and modify it that's what they're hoping for now obviously this is creating a lot of waves in the car communities especially people like in the libertarian party or republican party and stuff like that because a lot of them are saying that this is unconstitutional. Now, obviously, I wouldn't bring this up unless it was gaining traction. It actually is gaining a fair amount of it. No pun intended. Now, this isn't the first time the EPA has done it before. It definitely seems like it's further than they've gotten before, so we should definitely let your state legislators know how you feel about this. Uh, despite what some people think, you actually do have a voice. The only way those state legislators get uh, re-elected is if you vote them in. So if they know that what they're doing is ticking off someone, they're not going to let it pass because more than anything, they want to remain in power. There's also a petition that you can sign. I'll link that down in the description below. And basically, it's being put on by SEMA, which you check out their website. If you don't know SEMA and you're a car guy, what are you doing? They have a yearly super big car show where big car companies show off uh, uh, concepts, uh, crazy new inventions are making future cars, custom cars. It, it's crazy. If, if you ever get the money to go, which I do not, I definitely recommend going to go see it. <laughs> but uh, it's being put up by them, and it's basically uh, something that you can sign to show that, hey, definitely against this. But uh, yeah, I just want to touch on that one just a little bit, even though that's not the main point of the video. Uh, what you guys are curious is what's going to happen to cars in the next 10, 15, 20 years. Now, I actually have a pretty good track record with this. Uh, I made a COVID video. I don't know which side it's gonna be on, I always forget. A COVID video about like a year and a half ago, maybe two years now actually. <laughs> Happy birthday, COVID. But basically, uh, I was saying what I was expecting was gonna happen to the car community and you know, all of it came true. But uh, let's see if we can strike gold twice. So with the advent of electric cars, the car community is reeling. Now at first, a lot of people were ridiculed because they were saying that eventually uh, governments are gonna try to ban gas cars and all that kind of stuff, and they were kind of tossed off as conspiracy theorists, but now that is actually a very real possibility. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, uh, California, uh, <laughs> they're uh, really showing their good friends with the automotive world. Sarcasm is obviously intended. But basically, uh, Gavin Newsom, he put an order that by 2035, it'll be illegal for dealerships to sell anything but electric cars. Now, that's not saying they're going to outlaw gasoline or anything like that. How 
ever. It's definitely within like the next few decades, I'm sure that electric cars are gonna be the mainstay of California. And that's not all. See, I wanna say it was Ford or GM, I don't know, it was both. Uh, by 2030 to 2035, they wanted every single car they output to be an electric vehicle. So this has officially gone past California all the way to the auto manufacturers. Now, people are asking, is this a good thing or is this a bad thing? Well, the answer is neither and both. Don't get me wrong, I always love gas cars and I always prefer the sound of a roaring engine over the silence of an EV, but electric vehicles, I do believe, are the next step when it comes to performance. Think about it. The main draw of electric vehicles is A, they're rechargeable, so it's way cheaper than gas. So me personally, if I had the funds, I would have an electric vehicle's daily driver. And B, with electric motors, you don't have to worry about your RPMs uh, reaching their strongest because you get all that torque directly to your wheels. Now, as far as performance goes, it's making some uh, ludicrous mode Teslas really give uh, companies like Dodge and GM a run for their money when it comes to zero to 60 times. Because despite what everyone says, the vast majority of people don't want a performance vehicle. They want a vehicle that zero to 60 feels crazy fun. That's what they mean by they want a fast car. With electric vehicles, for cheaper, you'll be getting that zero to 60 that you want, just at the cost of the cool sounds. However, this is also a bad thing because like I said in my California video a few months back, there's gonna be a slight technological gap when it comes to poor people that can't afford electric vehicles and obviously the people from middle cost of living and up. I don't know why I'm blanking on that term, but uh, there's gonna be like kind of like a 10 year gap of awkwardness is what I think, probably roughly around 2040 area. And it hurts to say, but I do feel fairly certain that I'm gonna be seeing the death of the V8 uh, within the next 30 or 40 years. However, uh, the news is not all that grim. Now, with the dawn of electric vehicles and more people going to electric vehicles, gas can go either way. Either, this, I'm really hoping this isn't the case, gas will get super expensive and be viewed as a luxury good for only those that can afford it, or because they're desperate to get people to buy it, gas is gonna go way down price-wise, which I'm really hoping is the second one. But, you know, there's no way to really tell what's gonna happen because it hasn't happened yet. And these are just, things that I'm expecting to see in the future. But uh, if you love muscle cars, the future is not that dim, even though it's still pretty dim, <laughs> not gonna lie. Tesla swaps are actually starting to become a thing. Now, for those of you guys that don't know, Tesla swaps is basically you're putting a Tesla motor in an old fashioned car. Now, don't get me wrong, I personally, I think this is heresy to put a quiet motor in a, a big old muscle car or anything like that. <laughs> but these kits do exist. Now, are they expensive? They are very, very expensive and that's only for the electric motor by itself that's not counting the battery it's not counting uh the cost it takes to change it over and the computer and all that stuff basically probably for like the next 10 years or so it's gonna stay around the 30 to 50 grand price point but the good news is probably by the time i'm like 40 or 50 that's gonna go down by a lot i mean let's face it just uh just 40 and 30 years ago uh, it was really hard to build a strong engine unless you had deep pockets, but now with the modern day and uh, internet and all that kind of stuff, it's really easy to find engine parts. So most likely electric vehicles will follow the same suit. So yes, there's a fair chance that uh, you're still gonna see classic cars on the road. So that's a good thing. They're just not gonna be able to roar. But uh, one of the things that Tesla actually does, I wanna say it's Tesla, I'm pretty sure, and a lot of modern car companies do, is fake engine noises. Now, right now these are kind of uh, fully focused on uh, the interior because some of these cars don't sound how companies want them to so some speakers will play uh, fake engine noise and they're getting really good where I can't even tell sometimes. It's not hard to assume that electric vehicles will likely have speakers on the outside so it'll still sound like a V8. Now you won't get like the crazy rumbling but as far as uh, old cars like not being around anymore I don't think there's a fair chance that muscle cars are just going to disappear. They're just going to be very very different. No V8s. There's not going to be any more V8s. It's just going to be fake sounds and non-moving engines. <laughs> so while the death of the V8 is definitely on the track, I don't think the death of the muscle cars anytime soon. Now, uh, let's talk about something else. Now, electric vehicles, I already covered that. Uh, what I think is going to happen, at least in the day-to-day -day life. But let's talk about the self-driving cars. Now, Self-driving cars are still a technology that's very much in its infancy, however, it's very promising for the future. Don't get me wrong, self-driving cars are cool, but me personally, I'm kind of stuck in the middle in that because I wanna say I trust other drivers more than a computer, but I don't. 
I really don't. I almost got sideswiped uh, on the way to work yesterday because some idiot was texting on their phone. And I think that actually, as far as safety, self-driving cars will be a lot safer. They just need to definitely be programmed a little bit better. <laughs> because you run into the issue where self-driving cars have to decide, do I need to protect the passenger or do I need to protect the uh, person on the outside? Now, right now, they're focused on protecting the person on the inside of the car more than anything else, which means that if they think it's gonna keep their driver safe, they're gonna smash into a pedestrian. Now, granted, like I said, it's in its infancy. I'm sure they'll find a way to hammer these things out in probably, I'd say the next 10 or 15 years. Honestly, uh, highways full of self-driving cars is right around the corner. I'm not gonna, uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna touch that amp pot with a burning stick. There is the case that some people think that because uh, self-driving cars are gonna be so commonplace that they're thinking that the, maybe driving in general is gonna be illegal, which at first I would have said that's ridiculous, but that's what we said about uh, combustion cars. And especially in Europe, those are starting to go the way of the dodo. Why did I say dodo so weird? Now, me personally, you know what side I'm gonna fight for. I want my uh, muscle car. I wanna be able to drive it. I love the feeling of driving a car. And I feel like that's definitely going to lead to some huge uh, court case about whether it's constitutional to enforce safety or to enforce freedom, which country's having a lot of that right now. Me, I'm on the side of freedom more than anything, but I can't say that for the rest of the country. So as far as timelines for all this, uh, I would say electric vehicles in the next five years are gonna be extremely commonplace. They're already very commonplace where I live. Of course, I live in the Bay Area. Electric vehicles are gonna become very commonplace by 2025. By 2030, I feel uh, self-driving technology will definitely be much closer to being perfected, if not perfected. So not only are electric vehicles gonna be commonplace, but also self-driving vehicles are gonna be very commonplace too, which I'm expecting at least in really, uh, in big areas in California, uh, I'm expecting probably at least one third to maybe uh, half, at least one third to maybe half of the cars in the Bay Area, I believe will either be uh, electric or self-driving. 2035, that's roughly when Ford, GM, and California will all be together and you won't be able to sell brand new combustion engines or cars anymore, brand new. Now, luckily this, this is gonna be probably a 10 to 15 year jump between the entire state moves over to electric vehicles besides enthusiasts. Obviously gas cars aren't gonna disappear immediately. I know a fair amount of people that still drive cars from the 80s. So this could actually, we're still gonna have gas cars for a very long time. There just won't be any new ones. 2040, I feel uh, gas will have made its decision about whether it's gonna be a hot commodity or uh, just desperately trying to get some cash out. So I'm guessing by 2040, we'll probably have the problem about whether gas is gonna be a luxury expensive good or it's gonna be a very cheap good because they're just trying to get any money they can. It all depends on the marketing, which I do marketing, so maybe I can help that to our advantage. <laughs> now, this is a huge gap and this isn't based on anything, but by 2050, I'm expecting at least three quarters of the car to be self-driving in California anyways. Now, I'm definitely not a guy that's against progress. I really appreciate electric vehicles for everything they do. They're As far as like when it comes to the tank, they're cheaper. Eventually, they're gonna be uh, dirt cheap to buy too but uh, I just don't like the feeling of losing gas cars. However, I feel like it is a necessary step that I'm going to see in my lifetime. And it makes sense. I mean, when the electric car thing is based on a ton of logic and it does make sense, at least until overall at the tailpipe, it's cleaner. However, we also gotta figure out a way to get those cobalt out of the mines because right now the average electric car probably just pollutes as badly as a modern uh, gas car. But if we want electric vehicles, what we need to focus on is how to make them greener as far as like getting the cobalt out of the mines because that is really bad for the environment. It's terrible. However, with uh, definitely us tapping into the reserves of petrol soon or gas, I don't know why you say petrol like a Brit. Uh, it's definitely something that we need to perfect now while there's still gasoline in abundance right now. I mean, you know, I'm prepping for the future. I will say probably in a hundred years, the gas cars will probably be completely the way of the dodo, which I'll be dead, so I don't really care at that point. It's hard to say which side I'm on because I love the performance torque, I love all that, but it's hard to argue for it when on one side, it's a bunch of logic, it's safer, it's better on gas, it's cheaper, not gas, you know what I mean. Whereas the other one is just kind of fueled by nostalgia. It's very hard to win a conversation like that. And that's just something I do want to let everybody know that even though we love gas cars, most of our arguing is on the side of nostalgia. 
at least until they fix the cobalt thing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, by no means should you take this video as fact. This I'm literally just some college student making conjecture over based of what I've already seen. Uh, I do think that the death of combustion is probably going to be towards the end of my lifetime. Probably towards the end of a lot of your guys watching this too. It's kind of sad to see, but at the same time I understand. As long as I have gas though, I'm going to enjoy it while I can. Sorry, this is kind of a, a more somber video, but uh, those are just my thoughts on the matter. And I thought that it's definitely something that we need to talk about. And I definitely appreciate if you guys started a conversation about it in the comments. I love to talk about that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. I uh, hope you guys have a good day. Peace.